The thing I would point out is that there are bull markets and bear markets in basically any tradable instrument or commodity, or I consider gold to be a form of money. But what we're really talking about when we say, you know, gold is up, we're talking about the dollar price of gold. And I view it as a cross exchange rate. People talk about the dollar, you know, the euro dollar exchange rate. Well, there's a dollar gold exchange rate and that's the dollar price of gold. So there's just alternative forms of money where people get to express a liquidity preference or a credit reference if you will, if you're concerned about the if you're losing confidence in the dollar. But the first great bull market was 1971 to 1980. It lasted 9 years and gold went up 2200%. The second great bull market was from 1999 to 2011. Gold went up just a little under 700%. But in between, you had a bear market from 1980 to 1999. So long run, you know, almost 20 years. Gold dropped from $800 to $250 at the bottom in 1999. And we have a second bear market starting in 2011. And I had a very interesting conversation with Jim Rogers. You know, Jim is one of the great commodity traders, money managers of all times. And we were down in Dominican Republic, Casa de Campo. This was around 2014. But you know the bear market started in 2011, but it really fell off a cliff in 2013. So I said, Jim what do you think of gold? What are you doing? He goes, well I own it of course. And he said I'm not selling but I'm not buying right here. And he says something that just hit me right between the eyes and stay with me. And of course he's right. He said gold is going to the moon, but nothing goes to the moon. Without a 50% correction along the way. And if you look at the high in 2011, $1900 you know approximately. And where was the bottom of the bear market? It was $1050 on December 16, 2015. Nobody knew it was the bottom at the time. But if you look at that drop down and you use $250 as your base. Because you know you need a base. So you had basically the run from 250 to 1900 was $1,750 go down 50%. From there it's $850. 1,900 minus 825 is 1,075. In the bottom was 1,050. So Jim totally stuck the landing. At 1,050 like okay there's your 50% retracement. Now that's the bottom. Now it's going up and the sky's the limit. Well we're not overheated at all. I've got gold that I would put at $15,000 an ounce before 2025. But as I point out, if you're going to $15,000 an ounce, you got to get to $3,000, $5,000 and $7,000 first. So there's plenty of room to run plenty of room for profit. But you know when I say things like that and I want to be clear. There is a lot of analysis behind it. I don't just pull a big number out of the air and you know for publicity because I could care less. But if you just took the average, there are a couple of ways to think about it. Not just take the average of the two prior bull markets I mentioned. So 71 to 80, 9 years, 2200%, 99 to 2011, a 12-year bull market, about 700%. Just take the average. You don't have to go to the higher of the two or extrapolate. Just take the average of those two bull markets. You would say okay the next bull market's going to be a little over 10 years and it's going to go up. It's going to go up 1,500%. So using that as your base just take the average of the two. You say 10 years in 2015 that puts you out to 2025 and you know. 1,400% puts you at $15,000 an ounce off a 1,050 base. So that's just history. But there are other ways to think about it now. You know, I don't know if there will be a gold standard or not, but I do know that gold will move. The price of gold will move in the direction of where we need to be if you are going to have a gold standard. And you know, I talked to Paul Volcker about this and he agreed, you know. If you just took the money supply, so just take M1 which as you know. Pretty widely accepted definition of money supply take it for the US, the ECB, UK, Bank of Japan, and the People's Bank of China. There are other entities you can include. But that's about over 75% of global GDP right there. Divide that number by the official gold which is about 34,000 metric tons a little bit less. You come to $15,000 an ounce. So if you're going to either there have a gold standard, or even use gold as a reference point for money, 
if you need to restore confidence in the dollar. The implied non-deflationary price is $15,000 an ounce. So what I find interesting is that if you use the just the history of the last two bull markets and average them, or if you use you know a rigorous calculation what's the implied non-deflationary price interestingly they come out in the same place. I don't think they have to their two different methods. But they both point to $15,000 an ounce sometime over the next three or four years. It is a moving target the numbers I gave you are based on current levels. Whether you keep printing money you need a higher price. Do if you want a reference gold. And not cause deflection which they don't. You are going to need a progressively higher price of gold. One thing people forget. They tend to they look at the dollar price in absolute dollars. So it went up $100 an ounce. Or you know I expect before long it's all go up $1000 an ounce a week. But each dollar increase is a smaller percentage increase. So people look at the dollar it's real money. It's nice to make the money, but you know if you go from $14,000 an ounce to $15,000 an ounce that's only a 7% increase. I mean that's you can do that in a week. So my point is it's still $1,000 an ounce good for the holders. But the percentage increase gets smaller and smaller as the absolute dollar amount gets larger and larger, so $15,000 sounds like a big number from today's perspective. But as you go to 10, 11, 12, it gets to be a progressively smaller percentage increase. And therefore more likely you really. You need to see a logarithmically to see a you know a less hyperbolic curve. So, logarithmically is the right way to think about it. But in dollar terms, the percentage increase gets to be pretty small of those levels. And when I say $15,000 an ounce, I don't think I'm stretching. And did that math that's with 40% backing because historically 40% has been a high level of backing. If you take M2 at 100% backing you get to $50,000 an ounce in a heartbeat. My numbers, I think are conservative they could be much higher. But the thing. I will point out, is that the Fed dug a hole and they can't get out of it. And I said and you know where are all along but, certainly you know 2014, 2015 etc as they did the taper, and then they did the left off and then they raised rates and all that. I said the Fed is trying to get out of this. They're trying to normalize the balance sheet trying to normalize interest rates. But I also said they won't be able to do it. And that's exactly what happened in the fourth quarter of 2018. Between October 1st and December 24th, 2018 the stock market dropped 19%. It was one point away from a bear market at that stage. And then you had the Christmas Eve massacre. And that's when Jay Powell threw in the towel, he got religion. He said okay first he said we're not going to raise rates anymore, then he said we're on pause. Then he said we're actually going to cut rates. And then 9 months later he said we're going to end quantitative tightening which is reducing the balance the money supply. And then September 2019 they started QE4, which is the, that was before, any of the before the recession, before the depressions, before the pandemic, they were already in QE4, and cutting rates again. So they can't get out of it now it's worse so they prove that. The failures manifest they prove that they can't get out of it. What's the secret behind I think it's garbage by the way. But so what's the secret it? The secret behind it is, if you can issue debt and collect taxes and the money that you print, you can force people to accept the money because they need the money to pay their taxes. And if they don't pay the taxes they end up in jail. Now you can get extensions or you now do whatever. But at the end of the day if you manifestly refuse to pay your taxes they will come and put you in jail. And the point is it relies on state power, it's really a neo-fascist concept. It relies on coercion, you know the point of a gun. Jails and state power to enforce the confidence in money. Now that's and they say that I mean I have read Stephanie Kelton. She's the bright light I mean this goes back a long way. But I have met her read her books I should say and her articles. But they are very explicit about that now. I think that's completely wrong because there are so many workarounds. And so many ways to get out from under that kind of state power. But they do rely on state power at the end of the day. So that's why it has this neo-fascist element, 